ranking member of the Course Subcommittee, Senator Kennedy of Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Americans may be poorer under the Biden administration, but they are not stupid. They know what's going on here. I remember the Democratic leaders' words of March 4th, 2020, on the steps of the United States Supreme Court, like they were yesterday. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, he said, not Justice Gorsuch, Gorsuch. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. Wow. Just wow. I think Matthew 12, 36 is correct. For by thy words you shall be justified, and by thy words you shall be condemned. Now the sad truth is that some, not all, some of my Democratic colleagues have been on a crusade to undermine the United States Supreme Court's legitimacy and the credibility of the federal judiciary for years. Today's hearing is just the next chapter in their federal power grab, and they've invited cameras. It's worth remembering the very real persecution, persecution that some Democrats have levied on very good people. It started with the savage destruction of Professor and Judge Robert Bork, which even the Washington Post, for God's sakes, the Washington Post said was a case of sentencing first, verdict afterwards. In other words, they gave him a fair and impartial firing squad. Then we saw the high-tech lynching of Justice Clarence Thomas. Then, for the first time in history, they weaponized the filibuster to kill Mr. Uh, Miguel Estrada's nomina nomination, and they also demonized Justice Janice Rogers Brown, a very fine person. When the United States Senate confirmed three new Supreme Court justices, which the loon wing of the Democratic Party loathed, the campaign of threats ratcheted up. You remember the shouts, let's pack the court, they said. Let's pack the court. And the political threats of some of the highest officials in our government fueled physical threats against the justices, and we know that. You have released the whirlwind the Democratic leader said. Incensed protesters took to the streets, not outside Congress, not outside the court, but outside the homes, the homes of Justice Roberts, Justice Kavanaugh, Justice Thomas, and Justice Barrett. Federal law prohibits this intimidation, but the Biden Justice Department allowed it. You will pay the price, the Democratic leaders said. In that spirit, angry protesters publicized the location of the school that Justice Barrett's children attend. You won't know what hit you, the Democratic leaders said. A man with a gun, ammunition, knife, pepper spray and zip ties went to a justice's home to assassinate him. Actually, his stated goal was to murder three justices. Not so suddenly, the ends justified the means for activists. Even inside the court itself, the Dobbs decision was not leaked by a left-wing blogger. Why? That's worth asking. You don't need to be Einstein's cousin to figure it out. 
they aren't getting their way. They aren't getting their way. So they want to change the rules. But the Constitution isn't a game, folks. And now some Democrats want Congress to override the Supreme Court of the United States and apply rules to its justices. The constitutional separation of powers means that no branch of the federal government can dictate how another should govern itself. That's black letter law. Now, why this is to protect the people from abuse. The framers insulated the federal judiciary from political control to ensure that the justices would decide cases impartially. Impartially without fear of the kind of retaliation that fills the pages of some, not all, but some left of Lenin Democrats' playbook. Do my colleagues want the United States Supreme Court to tell Congress how to police itself? Even if Congress wrote a code of ethics for the Supreme Court, the court could rightly rule that code is unconstitutional. None of the laws we make here trump the United States Constitution. What's more, some Democrats want to use the lower courts as a cudgel against the highest court in the land by giving circuit judges the power to rule on whether justices should recuse themselves. Consider the conflicts of interest and the confusion that that would breed. Unless you peaked in high school, you must know they will be breathtaking. Now, the absence of an ethics code written by Congress in statute doesn't mean that justices lack guidance or accountability. Justices and judges routinely consult the existing code of conduct, and federal law already requires recusal in certain circumstances like bias or financial interest. We all know that. The justices are also subject to strict financial disclosure rules, just like my colleagues here. Not only is this democratic proposal unconstitutional, it is unnecessary. The attacks on conservative justices are targeted. They're exaggerated. The alarmism is affected. The danger isn't that rogue justices are operating without ethics. It's that Democrats aren't winning every fight and they find that reality intolerable. I've been disappointed by Supreme Court opinions too. But my Democratic co colleagues should fill out a hurt feelings report and move on for the sake of the Constitution. Look, the agenda-driven story here is that Justice Thomas has a rich friend who had no business before the United States Supreme Court. For context, let's recall that history is littered with examples of public officials failing to disclose their every transaction. We can acknowledge it's required by law. It is. We can acknowledge it's the right thing to do. It is. But we can do that without maligning each justice's motives and the entire institution's credibility, for God's sakes. You know who else amended their disclosures because of inadvertent admissions? Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Justice Stephen Pryor, two good people. Justice Jackson made multiple amendments, three days three days after President Biden nominated her. Not one senator brought that up during her confirmation hearings. Not one of my colleagues here walked into her hearings with, with the buckets of mud that they've thrown against Justice Thomas. Not one. Nor should we have. In the last month, some, not all, but some Democrats and their media allies have hyped up attempted hit pieces on every Republican appointed Supreme Court justice except for one. They've tried going after Justice Kavanaugh for buying baseball tickets, Justice Alito for having dinner with people who gossip, the wife of Chief Justice Roberts for hiring good lawyers, 
Justice Gorsuch for selling land in an LLC, which he properly disclosed to a major donor for the, to the Democratic Party, for God's sakes, who he, he's never even met, and Justice Thomas for having a rich friend. Justice Barrett, if you're listening, I hope you don't have library books overdue. If recent hint, uh, history is any indicator, you're next. Today's hearing is an excuse to sling more mud at an institution that some, uh, not all, some Democrats don't like because they can't control it 100% of the time. And that's a fact, and everybody in this hearing room knows that. Until they get the outcome they want in every case, I fear they are going to continue to slander it in an effort to take control of it. And I pray to God I am wrong. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.